Hi, I'm Jeremiah Hersey, and today we're going to be talking about how to edit a record inside of a Canvas app. And with that edit button, we're also going to put a condition around it to only allow editing of records within a certain time frame. So let's take a look at make.powerapps.com. So here we are inside of an application that I've built, and this app has two tables in it. It has a parks table, which is this gallery over on the left hand side, and the associated inspections for that park on the right hand side. So there's two tables, a park table and an inspection table. Currently I have this form set up to create new records. So we can select the park that we want. Let's choose Thunderbolt. Go to four star, say there's a safety issue, and click submit. Our record has now been submitted, which is great. The next thing that we want to do is we want to be able to edit these records. So as I select a park, I want to be able to select a record and that record populate inside of this form. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the template cell of the gallery. Inside of a gallery, if you select anything other than the first row, that's going to select the whole gallery. The template cell is this first cell at the top. If you have the whole gallery selected and want to go into the template cell quickly, use the pencil icon in the upper left hand corner. Once inside the template cell, you can now add an edit button. So I want to show you what happens if you're not inside the template cell. For instance, if I want to add a edit icon to these records, I'll click icons from the insert tab and we can click a pencil icon. Notice it puts it in the upper left hand corner and I can drag it in place but there's only one pencil icon. This isn't going to work for me. So if you see only one pencil icon when trying to insert an icon inside of a gallery, make sure you're inside the template cell. So we can go ahead and delete this and click inside the template cell. It doesn't matter where you're at. You can have the whole cell selected or just an item inside the first cell. We're going to click our icon now and put in an edit icon. Notice that now I get a pencil icon in every row inside of that gallery and as I move the pencil, it follows the position. So now that we have our pencil icon inside of our gallery, we have to tell the icon what to do when someone selects it. So in the on select property, in the property drop down box, we're going to get rid of this code and the form to edit or the function to edit a form is edit form. Really simple. So edit form and then the form that you would like to edit. That's it as far as the actual button is concerned. There's no more code that you need to do on this, uh, on this button. Now, the second thing that you have to do in order to edit a record, currently this form is set to new mode. So if I select my whole form, look at the default mode on the right hand side, it's set to new mode. So this is for new records only. If I want to edit a record, I need to change the item property in the property drop down box. So with your whole form selected, go to item. And we're going to tell this form to display the items from this gallery down here, which is I call gallery two. Whatever I select in gallery two, I want to populate that information inside of my form. So on the item property in the property drop down box with your form selected, I'm going to say gallery two dot selected. 
Now, if I hold down the Alt key to preview my application, if I click on a park and I click on the edit icon, notice that now this record now populates inside of our form and I can make changes to it. I can take the safety issue off and I can say, let's say the trash. And it's hard to, it's hard to edit um, text inside of the designer. So it's easier to go into play mode for text. So we'll say trash picked up, trash picked up. And we'll submit. And now we have our record in there for that. So now that we have the record in there, this button allows editing of records no matter when the record is. So let's say for instance, you have records that you only want edited for two weeks. So after 14 days, you want the records to no longer be allowed to be edited. Well, in order to do that, you have to create a conditional statement inside of Power Apps, and it's also going to use what's called a date diff function. It's going to take the difference between two dates. So what I'm going to say is if the difference between the inspection date and today's date is greater than a certain amount. So the first thing we're going to do is days, and then we'll do hours but you can use quarters, years, minutes, seconds, milliseconds. It's really quite dynamic. So the pencil on the edit icon, we're going to go to the visible property. Once again, make sure you're inside the template cell on the template cell pencil icon and we're going to go to the visible property. Currently it's set to true, which means it's always visible. So let me find a record in here that's, let's see how the latest record, that's 2-5. All right, so we could do like four days. All right, so in the formula bar, zoom in for you guys. We're going to get rid of that true statement and we're going to say if. And once again, we're going to use our date diff function. We're going to look at the difference between two dates. The first date, notice it says the start date. The start date is going to be the inspection date. And then we're going to use a comma to go to the next piece. The next piece is the end date. Well, we're going to use today, the today function. So look at the difference between the inspection date and today's date. If you put a comma after your end date, it will now give you the option to choose your units. Notice I have days, hours, months, seconds, years. You can choose whatever you want. For this first piece, we're going to use days. I'm going to close my parenthesis for to close up my date diff. Now, now that we've done that, we're still inside the logical test part of our conditional statement. So I said if the difference between the inspection date and today's date in days, let's say, um, is greater than two. Then I want you to hide the item otherwise show it. So let's walk through this one more time. If the difference between the inspection date and today's date is greater than two days, hide my edit button, otherwise show it. So let's take a look at our inspections now. So down here in our gallery, we'll hold We'll hold down the Alt key to allow us to preview our app. And as we scroll down, notice that as I get past two days, because today's the 10th, 
my edit button disappears. So this is specifying anything greater than two days, and of course you can change it to whatever um, formula you would like. Right now it's set to days. So let's go in there and let's change it to hours now. Um, let's say uh, 72 hours. So we're gonna change our unit to hours. And we're gonna change this to 72 hours, so three days. Once again, the same thing, if the difference between the inspection date and today's date is greater than 72 hours, hide the button, otherwise show it. So let's take a look. Let's look at our gallery now. So as we scroll down, as we get past that 72 hour mark, notice the pencil or the edit icon disappears. And as we do this, it's dynamically done throughout our application. And so as I select different parks, the pencil icon will be there or not be there depending on the inspection date. I want to thank you guys for joining me. I hope this helps you in dynamically creating an edit button that only allows for editing within a certain time frame. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.